Yes, it is, Jamie, and there is Dak Prescott. 37 touchdown passes on the season. That's a franchise record. Good news is, no picks in the last 142 attempts. There's Jimmy G. He's 6-0 with no turnovers. And in San Francisco, hoping he turns into Kenny G with his own version of breathless. Debo Samuel, the San Francisco 49ers. He's rushed for 365 yards as a receiver, over 1,400 yards, and 14 total touchdowns. everyone and welcome to the NFL today presented by Ram Trucks. I'm James Brown. There is no question a heightened level of playoff intensity here in Studio 43. That's because my colleagues have performed under the brightest of lights. That would be former league MVP and of course Super Bowl 23 participant Boomer Asayasan, the Hall of Fame coach and Super Bowl champion Mr. Bill Cower, and the MVP of Super Bowl 21, the man with two rings. Is he friendly, fellas, or what? He's very friendly. Thank you. MVP. He's a little chippy today, a little chippy today. That would be yes. Phil Simms. Hey, we are missing Nate Burleson today, but he's out in Dallas calling today's game over on Nickelodeon. Nate, knock him alive, and I believe we'll be glad, glad to see him back next week. Yeah, we? he'll be sliming people today. He'll be sliming folks, <laughs> no question about that. Hey, wild card weekend got off to a rousing start yesterday with two games. First, Joe Burrow, the word to describe him, impressive, throwing two touchdowns in the Bengals' 26-19 win over the Raiders, clinching Cincinnati's first postseason victory in 31 years. Then in the nightcap, Josh Allen and the Bills could not have been more dominant, scoring touchdowns on each of their first six. Seven possessions, cruising to a 47-17 victory over the Patriots. No question, the football frenzy continues. Two more games still to play after our game today. First, it's Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs hosting Big Ben and the Steelers at 8.15 Eastern Standard Time, followed by the first ever Monday night wildcard game where Kyler Murray and the Cardinals hope to take down Matthew Stafford and the Rams. But first, in the shadows of names like Aikman, Staubach, Montana and Young, Dak Prescott and Jimmy Garoppolo lead the Cowboys and Niners as they renew an all-time classic NFL postseason rivalry. And you know what? This is the first 49ers post-game, postseason game that is, since the loss to the Chiefs in Super Bowl 54. And you have to think, Redemption is on the minds of Jimmy G and that offense today. Yeah, you, know, you talk about that offense. It's Kyle Shanahan offense, and it's really driven by the running game and play action. And, you know, for Jimmy uh, Garoppolo, he's been very good last week, a fourth quarter drive that br brought them back to a win. And you remember, he's been very good recently in the fourth quarter. And, you know, when you talk about that offense, though, the one thing is you have to find Debo. You know, talk about finding Waldo sometimes in a pitcher. You got to find Debo. He can line up anywhere, backfield, as a receiver. He's thrown a pass. He is a Mr. Multi-Purpose, everything very productive, and part of the play action is going to be George Kittle. These guys right now, between Debo Samuel and George Kittle, they're elusive and strong with run after the catch. It'll be very important for the Dallas Cowboys to be good tackling today. And you know what? That offensive line and this offense tries to wear you down, boom. And as you chew that, that bodes well for the defense. Listen, this defense is loaded, folks, and I'm telling you, it starts with Nick Bosa. He is relentless. He gets after the quarterback. He has... 
20 uh, 32 quarterback hits this year, 21 tackles for a loss, 15 and a half sacks. And like I said, he is relentless. Not only is he relentless, so is Fred Warner. Fred Warner, the very talented linebacker. He's one of their leaders. He has 137 tackles on the year. Eric Armstead, just think about all the great players, Phil, that the San Francisco 49ers can throw at this Dallas Cowboy defense. Wow, this game's got a lot of stars out there, that's for sure. One of those stars is Dak Prescott. He has been hot the last three weeks for sure. When you look at his numbers, no matter who they're playing, 70 uh, completion percentage, 851 yards and a big one. 12 touchdown passes, no interceptions. Dak Prescott can make all the throws on the field. One of the weaknesses of the 49er defense is the outside coverage. If you want to throw it to the sidelines, he has the arm to get it there with these wide receivers. We've seen it many times. Ezekiel Elliott, and of course, you got to say Tony Pollard, too. The offensive line, can they open up running holes for him? Can they make this running game go? even though I don't think this offensive line is what it used to be in years past. And the wide receiver group is really good. CeeDee Lamb, he is great after the catch, one of the best in the NFL, top 10 in, re in yards after the catch. So you got a lot to defend if you're the San Francisco 49ers defense. Who better to set the table for folks to watch the games than you guys all fired up? Hey, Dallas offensive coordinator Kellen Moore has his offense clicking, to say the least. But he's just one of the very talented coordinators coaching tonight, perhaps with an eye on the future, if you will. And for more on that, let's bring in our NFL Today insider, Jason Lockenfora. The Cowboys could lose both of their coordinators to head coaching jobs, JB. Something not lost on owner Jerry Jones. Jones has long considered more to be head coaching material, and now other teams do as well. Moore already interviewed with the Jaguars, and the Broncos, Vikings, and Dolphins will meet with him too. Some who know Jones well believes he'll be very willing to get very creative to try to keep more in one capacity or another. Five teams have already requested interviews with Cowboys defensive coordinator Dan Quinn, with league sources indicating the Broncos will make a strong push to land him. And 49ers defensive coordinator D'Amico Ryans, he's a rising star in the coaching ranks, and he'll interview with the Vikings. Ryans has strong support from the league office boom, and his defense improved greatly through the season. A lot of great candidates out there to be had, that's for sure. How about Trayvon Diggs? You talk about All-Pro. He's an All-Pro. 11 interceptions this year. He led the NFL in that category. Straight ahead on the NFL Today. With 10 Super Bowl titles between them, the Cowboys and 49ers are two of the NFL's most storied franchises. Who will add a happy ending to their story today in Dallas? Debo Samuel is the engine that keeps the 49ers offense moving, and the guys will tell you why he's become so dangerous anytime he steps on the field. Two Super Bowl champs are under center tonight as Big Ben and Patrick Mahomes face off in Kansas City. Find out if the guys think the grizzled vet has a chance to take down the fresh-faced superstar. That's all coming up when the NFL Today returns on CBS. NFL Today on CBS is presented by Ram Trucks, GD Power's number one brand in new vehicle quality, built to serve. It's playoffs time, America, and it all comes down to this. So I just got one question. Who's back you got? When the game is on the line. You got your back. When it's fourth and long. We got your back. When you need a big stop. We got your back. All or nothing. We got your back. Who's got your back? We got your back. It's the NFL playoffs. Who's back you got? That name, Debo Samuel, strikes fear in the hearts of defenses league-wide. Hey, folks, he can run, he can pass, he can catch. Ooh, Dallas, look out. This all-pro can and will Debo this game away from you. All right, folks, time now for pregame HQ delivered by Domino's. Debo Samuel getting the party started. The handoff goes to Samuel. He will throw it by Debo Samuel. Debo does it all. Samuel is done. That's what you call multi-purpose, multi-talented. <laughs> yes, sir. 
You know, maybe the most exciting football player in the NFL today, a triple threat for sure. He'll line up in five different positions. Take a look at this yards after the catch. He's second. He averages 110 yards a game. Why is Debo so dangerous? For well, a lot of reasons why. Everybody asks, is he a running back or a wide receiver? And I go, yes. <laughs> That's what he is. He can do it all. Here he is, a running back in the backfield. You think, oh, it's just speed, sweep, threat. No. There's power runs inside. Reads the blocking well. Gets the extra yards and is not worried about contact with those legs he can drive the defender back wide receiver fast big strong yeah use those hands pushing the defender off and once he catches the football he is explosive running down the field this led to a san francisco touchdown to tie the game up oh he's going to run the speed sweep boomer to the outside okay here we go let's go get him oh no he's going to throw the ball the jump pass for the touchdown a little joe cap action joe right cap? yeah but he does everything so you never know what he's going to do wherever he lines up. The ultimate triple threat for sure, an exciting football player, maybe the best football player in the league. Let's go over to Coach and JB. Hey, fellas, thank you so very much. And uh, Coach definitely has the answer on this. <laughs> Debo, a human Swiss Army knife, talk about the matter. Well, you talk about the Dallas Cowboy defense. The one thing they're going to have to do is win the turnover takeaway battle. You know what? They've been doing that pretty well this year. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the takeaways, number one in the National Football League, interceptions, 21st in the National Football League, and they have scored off of them defensive touchdowns six. But when you look at this offense of the San Francisco 49ers, you're right. It's about finding Debo Samuel. It's about giving a lot of motion that you have. And Dan Quinn knows that. So it tests your eye discipline, GB. I did they, they try to take you and get you off your focus of responsibility. But what they have to do is take this guy right here, Micah Parsons, and use him as a disruptor. They are undersized defensively. Him, Demarcus Lawrence, these are two guys that can dig split gaps and kind of get that running game going sideways. And you know what? You talk about guys in the backfield, Trevon Diggs, 11 interceptions. But for today, him, it's going to be about tackling. Because these guys right now, they're elusive. Debo Sandler, they're strong. You talk about George Kittle and Mitchell coming off the game. These guys are going to have to tackle well play eight in the box and I love the fact that you have Dan Quinn who is offensive coordinator when he went to the Super Bowl with the Atlanta Falcons who is his offensive coordinator Kyle Shanahan they're going against each other on opposite sides changing wits in a single elimination tournament this is your time of oh, year I <laughs> discipline we'll come back to that hey folks the fate of America's team rests largely on the shoulders of that man Dak Prescott but fear not Dak understands the assignment because he said Pressure is a privilege, and he can earn every bit of that today. Love it. CBS Sports celebrates the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. As one of the captains of the Niners defense, there's no denying Eric Armstead's leadership on the field and in the locker room, but the veteran really shines in the community where he seeks to live Dr. King's legacy by helping to create equity and equality for all. Dr. King inspires me because he was fearless. He gave a voice to people who didn't have the platform or a voice to express themselves or express their struggle. He inspires me because um, I feel like it's my responsibility, just like he took onus on himself and made it his responsibility to step up for others and make society a better place. Um, I feel I take that same responsibility, and he's definitely you know, a big influence on my activism and using my voice to um, stand up for other people. Education is the key to solving uh, a lot of inequity in our country. It's key for me and giving young people an opportunity to be successful in life. That's where I found that I could have a huge impact, and so I decided to, you know, drive my focus there. My dream is to see Dr. King's dream really come to fruition, equal opportunities for everyone. His dream is what we're still trying to achieve, and, you know, that would be the ultimate dream of mine, to live in a society that is truly equal and equitable for everyone. And you know, guys, another prime example of a great guy in the NFL. We saw Devin McCourty last night, and here you are with Eric Armstead, just absolutely tremendous people. And you paved the way, because for the second consecutive year, Eric Armstead is a nominee for the Walter Payton Man of the Year, an award that you won once. So using your platform to make a difference is what this is all about.
Yeah, look, he is someone to look up to. He's a great role model. There's no question about that when you listen to him or watch what he does in the community, but also what he does on the field. I want to talk about what a player is. They moved him from outside to inside. It changed the 49er defense. They became much better at stopping the run. It's one of the reasons why they're in the playoffs. You made the point before. These are typical of what the NFL players look like, not the aberrant few that we hear so much about. No question about it. Right. Majority. Thank you very much. Hey, folks, tonight in prime time, there are many who believe that the Ben Roethlisberger postseason farewell tour could begin and end in Kansas City at the hands of Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Ben Roethlisberger, 39 years old. Roethlisberger, end zone, touchdown! Yard Looking for it all for the Steelers touchdown! This is who and what Ben is. And maybe this isn't the last chance for Big Ben. Mahomes is in the zone. Now fires it late back in the end zone. Touchdown! What a big time play. Mahomes magic. He's going to scramble. Touchdown! Now Mahomes looking for the end zone pass. Holmes is fired up. This is what you get with Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Well, we got a good young quarterback tonight, of course, in Patrick Mahomes and Ben Roethlisberger trying to extend that career for one more game. You know, I got to talk about this Steeler defense, though, uh, guys. You know, the Steeler defense, can you make Kansas City go on those long, slow drives and 10 or 12 plays? If you can do that, that's going to be great. You got to force Patrick Mahomes to be patient. He's at his best when he's impatient, like Boomer. You know, when he gets impatient, he's wrong. <laughs> but no, when Patrick Mahomes gets out of the pocket, that's when you get in trouble. Mm -hmm. So you got to be, the defense for the Steelers is fast. So if you make him throw it short, come up and make the tackles, that really gives you a good chance. TJ Watt's a lot healthier this year. When I, I'm going to say this game from the Pittsburgh Steelers, keep this thing close to the fourth right. quarter. And how do you do that? You run the ball with Najee Harris, and you sit there and get the quick passing game. That's what Ben is very comfortable with. He just cannot turn the football over. I would say to Ben, like I said in his first year, a punt is not a bad thing in right. this game right now. Because you get to the fourth quarter, the pressure now goes on to Kansas City, and you have one of the best field goal kickers in the league, and Chris Boswell. On Monday night, we'll see two high-flying offenses when Kyler Murray leads the Cardinals into Los Angeles to complete the trilogy against Cooper Cup and the Rams. And we're really going to finally find out about Matthew Stafford. This was the big acquisition everybody was talking about before the season started, and he's had a great season with Cooper Cup. They've been virtually unstoppable, guys. They added OBJ, of course. Les Snead and Sean McVay went all in on Matthew Stafford. Mm. I personally don't think there's a quarterback in the playoffs that has more pressure on him than this young man right here. He's never won a playoff game, and they brought him there to get him to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl in their own stadium this year. Mm. All right, fellas, I know we were watching anyway, but moments ago, the contest between the Eagles and the Buccaneers went final. Oh, uh, you know, I'll tell you what, Tom Brady's just amazing. Right here, Jalen Hurts is going to have a wide open Devonta Smith, but he's going to be a little bit late on the ball. And as we saw last night from Micah Hyde, here comes Mike Edwards, the safety, comes over and steals the ball. Man, I hate that, Bill, but you hate that? <laughs> yeah, how about course. Tom Brady? This is the touchdown pass right here I like that, don't you like that. that I like that's the 28th time that he's had multiple touchdown passes in a playoff game that's his 35th playoff win just an amazing amazing accomplishment by Tom Brady wow. all right boom and after the game it was out Melanie Collins catching up with Antoine Winfield Jr. Antoine, congratulations. And the NFL's number one running attack comes into your building, and you guys dictate the pace of this game. You never allow them to get into a rhythm. What allowed you guys to be so dominant defensively today? Yeah, I would say practice this game. Uh, we knew that they were running team, the number one in rushing, so we knew that was our first priority, stop the run, and, and we came out here and did that today. And when you look at what your offense did today, down a number of key guys, you lose your starting right tackle in the first quarter, and yet nine different receivers caught passes. What can you say about what the offense did today? Yeah, they did an awesome job today um, of scoring and uh, just, yeah. just doing their thing, and that's expected. Man, you got the go back there running it, so that's expected. How do you carry this into the, the, the divisional round, and is there anything else you feel like you guys need to shore up before you move on? Yeah, we just got to make sure that we finish the games. As yeah. you see, we didn't want to let up any points, but um, we got to make sure we finish and keep, keep the guys going. Antoine, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. He's got reason to be pumped up. My goodness gracious, five tackles and one sack. Here. Well, I worry about Tristan Wirfs. You know, he's in my eyes, the best right tackle in football, and they lost him in this game. I, I don't know how significant that injury is going to be, but Tom Brady's ageless. You know, we keep talking about it, keep talking about it, and we kind of just take it for granted. Mm. And again, another another game in the playoffs where he said multiple TD passes. He runs the whole show. You could see it on the field. He was just, he wasn't great today. He was all totally sharp, but man, I'll tell you, losing Tristan Wirfs could be a problem down the road. You talked about the front of the Tampa Bay defense, but you're talking about Whitehead and Winfield, those two safeties 
They made a lot of plays in this game today. Todd Bowles, again, once again, put up a great game plan. And they're getting healthy on the defensive side of the ball. And they're going to need that defense, like you said, because that offensive line is banged up. But great performance by Tom Brady once again. Yeah, listen, he's a great thrower of the football, one of the greatest that's ever played the game. Bruce Arians made this comment, and I won't forget it. He goes, I've never seen anybody like to throw the football more in practice than Tom Brady. It shows the way, the way he comes out in the field. Now, Philadelphia, they had their chances in this game. Every time they made a play, there was a penalty, three interceptions by Jalen Hurst. He, uh, Hurst, he missed wide open receivers, some wide open receivers. So Philadelphia, they look back and say, wow, we could have made this game a lot closer. No matter the number of losses on that squad, he is like EF Hutton Brady, that is. When he speaks, they listen no and question. they perform. He is the man. Hey, folks, and as of late, Jimmy G has been cash in the clutch over his last six starts. Folks, he's completing 70% of his passes in the fourth quarter and overtime. That's a good omen for the Niners, but we'll see if he has the uh, juice today. Mm. Hey, look. Hey, by the way, look who it is, guys. It's Stephon Diggs straight off of his victory last night with his teammates Buffalo Bills. He's down in Dallas to watch his brother today. Phil, could you ever imagine doing that? It's good to have money. It is. <laughs> <laughs> The NFL Today is sponsored by Geico. You could save even more by bundling home and car insurance. Verizon, the official 5G network of the NFL. And by Ram Trucks, J.D. Power's number one brand and new vehicle quality. Montana. No doubt about it, the catch is one of the most historic moments in league history. And that iconic play is symbolic of this rivalry. Dallas leads the series five games to two with the winner lifting the Lombardi Trophy on five different occasions. Hey, folks, the last head-to-head, -head, of course, was the 94 NFC Championship, a record sixth NFC title game match. Well, you look at these teams, two iconic franchises, no doubt about it. Ten Super Bowls between the two of them. Dak Prescott, Jimmy Garoppolo, they want to join the, the likes of Troy Aikman, Roger Stahlback, Joe Montana, and Steve Young and win Super Bowl titles for their football teams. This rivalry, all I can say is I did my part in it. I lost plenty of games to both of these teams. <laughs> okay. Hey, 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 you won a few as well. A few, but not enough. Out. Hey, time now to deliver our picks with game day delivery presented by Amazon Niners. Cowboys, who comes out on top? Hey, listen, I'm taking the San Francisco 49ers 27-21. to 21. I love the San Francisco 49ers. It, to me, it's all about their pass rush. And for the Dallas Cowboys, how can they win on the defensive side? Can they stop the San Francisco running game? That's a big question. Well, I think part of that's going to have to be with the Dallas Cowboys controlling the ball on offense, and that's why I like their chances. They get Tyron Smith back, their left offensive tackle, CeeDee Lamb, and I like a healthy Tony, Tony Pollard. Zeke Elliott, you can start the game. Tony Pollard, I'll be my bell cow because you know what? I'm going to pick the Dallas Cowboys 31 27. One caveat. What? Greg Zerline. Oh, <laughs> man, he's missed six field goals and six extra points. Just do your job. Like a charge, just do your job. You know, guys, we Special sit team. here all week long. We look at statistics, we look at numbers, we look at players. But one thing about the 49ers, they have been on a roll, and they have been on a roll with big plays. When you take a look at big plays in the NFL, 20 yards or more. The San Francisco 49ers offense, they have produced the third most in the league, 75. Who has given up the most on the defensive side? That would be the Dallas Cowboys. They've given up 76 of those types of plays. That's why I'm taking the 49ers, and I'm going to take them 30 to 27 over the Cowboys. Wow, you know what? And folks in San Fran have certainly been skewering Jimmy Garoppolo, but boom. He has an opportunity to do something again with them. That's right. Take him back to the Super Bowl. He brought him back to Super Bowl 54. And you know what? He's been under a lot of pressure. He's often injured. That's why they went and drafted Trey Lance number three overall. You know, if he can win a Super Bowl, then he joins the likes of Steve Young and Joe Montana, legendary quarterbacks that led this legendary franchise to Super Bowl wins. I will tell you this. He's a really good, solid player. The thing I worry about is pass 
protection and pressure to force him into an interception or two. And it's a statement game for John, Dan Quinn going against uh, Kyle Shanahan and his opportunity because you talk about the big plays. Well, that defense has been big plays, too. We talked about it earlier in the show. Trayvon Diggs, 11 interceptions. They lead the league in touchdowns off the defensive side of the ball. So they're going to need Micah Parsons, Demarcus Lawrence. They're going to have to step back big, Phil. And I tell you what, this is going to be their offense against the defense. And it's played in the trenches. The one thing San Francisco can do is wear you down so the offense or Dallas stay on the field. Jimmy Garoppolo has been hot. He's been playing well for quite a few weeks, but everybody's waiting. As soon as he doesn't win the game, of course, we're going to focus on him, and that's just the way it goes if you're the NFL quarterback. For the Cowboys, to me, on the defensive side, play zone coverage, and everybody, what's that mean? Keep your eyes on the quarterback because the 49ers throw a lot of passes over the middle. If you're watching him, the tips, the interceptions, that's how you can get them. Ooh, baby, I'm getting fired up. Kickoff! Just a few minutes away, folks. We will see you back here at halftime. But coming up, it's history in the making. It's the Niners. It's the Cowboys. Hey, and let us channel our best Nate Burleson and say what? Next! There you go.